Hi, in this module, we will talk about nutrient management in rice. To manage the nutrient in rice, we apply fertilizers based on the soil test reports. So, we firstly test the soil and based on the report that we get from the testing, we apply fertilizers. Different doses of NPK are recommended for different agricultural zones. Based on the agricultural zones, we apply the different doses of NPK. NPK means nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Nitrogen can be used through complex fertilizers or through urea. We apply nitrogen in three equal splits. The three splits are applied each at transplanting stage, tillering stage and at panicle initiation stage. We identify these three different stages. First is transplanting, second is tillering and the third is panicle initiation. And we apply nitrogen in three equal splits. We apply phosphorus before transplanting and potassium is also split in two. But the potassium is not split equally. Rather, it is split as two-third and one-third. We apply the two-third of potassium before transplanting and one-third part of potassium is applied at panicle initiation stage. The planting season, that is, at what time the crop is planted and the planting areas, which are the geographical location of the plantations, determines the quantity requirement of three important nutrients, which are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium by the crop. Different seasons and different climatic zones require different amount of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. If we plant the crop in the Kharif season and the crop is planted in the Godavari zone of Andhra Pradesh, then the amount of nitrogen required is 36 kgs per acre. The amount of phosphorus required is 24 kgs per acre and potassium requirement is also of 24 kgs per acre. For the rice crop, which is planted in the Kharif season in Krishna zone in Andhra Pradesh, the amount of nitrogen needed is 32 to 36 kgs per acre. Phosphorus required is 24 kgs per acre and potassium needed is 16 to 24 kgs per acre. For the rice crop, which is again planted in the curry season only, but it is planted in the north coastal zone of Andhra Pradesh, the amount of nitrogen needed is 32 kgs per acre, phosphorus required is 24 kgs per acre, and potassium is needed to the amount of 16 to 20 kgs per acre. For the rice crop, which is planted in south zone of Andhra Pradesh in the Kharif season itself, the amount of nitrogen required is 32 kgs per acre. The amount of phosphorus required is 24 kgs per acre. And the amount of potassium required is 16 kgs per acre. For the crops which are planted in the less rainfall zone of Andhra Pradesh in Kharif season, the amount of nitrogen required is higher, which is 96 kgs per acre. The amount of phosphorus required is 32 kgs per acre. And the amount of potassium needed is also the same, is 32 kgs per acre. And if the rice crop is planted in the Rabi season instead, then the requirement changes. For the rice crop, which is planted in the Rabi season, in Godavari zone of Andhra Pradesh, the amount of nitrogen needed is 72 kgs per acre. And the amount of phosphorus required is 36 kgs per acre. And potassium is needed to the amount of 24 kgs per acre. For the rice crop planted in the Rabi season, in Krishna zone of Andhra Pradesh, the amount of nitrogen needed is 72 kgs per acre. Amount of phosphorus is 36 kgs per acre and potassium is also 24 kgs per acre. The amount of nitrogen phosphorus and potassium requirement in the Rabi season by Godavari zone crops and Krishna zone crops are the same. For the crops which are planted in the north coastal zone of Andhra Pradesh for the Rabi season, the amount of nitrogen required is 48 kgs per acre. 
phosphorus is 24 kg per acre and potassium is 20 kg per acre. For the rice crop which is planted in the south zone of Andhra Pradesh in the Rabi season, the amount of nitrogen needed is 48 kg per acre, phosphorus is 24 kg per acre and potassium is 16 kg per acre. And for the less rainfall zone, the requirement doesn't exist because the crops can't be planted in that zone in the Rabi season. When the area of plantation changes, then too the requirement changes. For the rice crop which is planted in the Kharif season in North Telangana, the amount of nitrogen needed is 40 to 48 kgs per acre and the amount of phosphorus required is 20 kgs per acre and potassium is needed to the amount of 16 kgs per acre. For the rice crop which is planted in the Kharif season, in central Telangana, the amount of nitrogen needed and phosphorus needed and potassium needed is the same as north Telangana. Nitrogen needed is 40 to 48 kgs per acre. The amount of phosphorus required is 20 kgs per acre and potassium is needed to the amount of 16 kgs per acre. For the rice crop, which is planted in the Kharif season, in South, in South Telangana, Telangana zone, zone, the amount the of nitrogen, nitrogen and, and phosphorus, phosphorus is still the same, which is 40 to 48 kgs per acre of, of requirement of Telangana. nitrogen. And the phosphorus is 16 is kgs still per acre, but the amount of potassium needed changes to 24 kgs per acre. Per still acre. At for all the crops planted in the Telangana zone, in any zone, for all the crops planted in the Rabi season, the amount of nitrogen requirement remains the same in the south Telangana For all the crops planted in the Telangana zone, in any zone, for all the crops planted in the Rabi season, the amount of nitrogen requirement remains the same at 48 to 60 kgs per acre. And the amount of Phosphorus needed for all the zones also remains the same at 24 kgs per acre, but the amount of potassium needed changes. For the North Telangana zone in Telangana region, for the crops planted in the Rabi season, the amount of potassium required in the North Telangana zone is 24 kgs per acre. For the Central Telangana, it is 16 to 24 kgs per acre, and for the South Telangana, it is 16 to 20 kgs per acre acre. For nutrient management, along with using Jekasan urea and Jekasan suraksha, there are two options for products which can be used. These are Jekasan super and Jekasan samrat. Option 1, when we use Jekasan urea and Jekasan suraksha, in option 1, we can use Jekasan super or SSP. The amount of urea needed before transplanting is 35 kgs per acre. The amount of super or SSP needed before transplanting is 150 kgs per acre. And the amount of suraksha or MOP needed before transplanting is 22 kgs per acre. Urea is needed again at 20 to 25 days after transplantation to the tune of 35 kgs per acre. At this time, there is no requirement of Jekisan Super, SSP or Jekisan Suraksha. At the time of panicle initiation or 45 to 50 days after transplanting, urea requirement again is 35 kgs per acre and there is no requirement for Jekisan Super or SSP. The requirement of Jekisan Suraksha at that stage, which is the stage of panicle initiation, we need 22 kgs per acre. Option 2 is to use Samrat along with Jekisan urea and Suraksha. At the time of transplanting, Jekisan urea is needed to the tune of 15 kgs per acre. The amount of Jekisan Samrat is needed to the tune of 52 kgs per acre and the amount of Jekisan Suraksha required is 22 kgs per acre. When we use Samrat instead of Super, the amount of urea goes down from 35 kgs to 15 kgs and the amount of samrat required is also much lesser than super which is was needed at the time of transplanting. 
the urea and suraksha requirement at 20 to 25 days after transplanting and at the time of panicle initiation are the same as option 1. The amount of urea needed at 20 to 25 days after transplanting and also at panicle initiation which is 45 to 50 days after transplanting is 35 kgs per acre. Jai Kisan Suraksha now is needed only at panicle initiation stage which is 45 to 50 days after transplanting and it is needed to the tune of 12 kgs per acre. Jai Kisan Samrat is not needed again. Let's look at the nutritional schedule in detail. The first nutritional pack that we talk about is called Mangala Cetrite. Mangala Cetrite is used for alkaline soils. Mangala Cetrite is an outstanding formulated soil amendment that reclaims alkaline soils more efficiently than any other soil amendment. It contains nutrients like calcium to the tune of 15%, magnesium to the rate of 3%, and sulfur at the rate of 5%. The benefits of Mangala Cetride are that it reduces the pH of the soils which are alkaline in nature. It also helps in making the nutrients readily available to the plants. It alleviates nutritional toxicities and improves physical health of the soil. It is applied in all crops and the dosage of application depends on the pH of the soil. Depending on the pH of the soil, we apply Mangala Cetrite. If the soil pH is between 7.3 to 7.7, .7, then the dosage of Mangala Cetrite is 50 kgs per acre. If the pH is between 7.8 to 8.2, the dosage needed is 100 kgs per acre. And if the pH is between 8.3 to 8.6, then the dosage of Mangala Cetrite is 150 kgs per acre. And if the pH is above 8.6, then the dosage is 200 kgs per acre. The application of Mangala Cetrite is done 15 days before transplanting for the field crops. And in case the crops are not field crops but perennial crops, then Mangala Cetrite is applied at pre-monsoon and at post-monsoon. Preferably, it should be applied two weeks prior to fertilizer application. Each bag of Mangala Cetrite is 50 kgs. So, just to recap, we are saying that Mangala Cetrite is for alkaline soils. It has a nutritional composition of calcium, magnesium and sulfur. It helps in reducing soil pH. It gives nutrients to the plants and improves the soil. The amount of Mangala Cetrite or the dosage of Mangala Cetrite depends on the pH of the soil and the time of application of Mangala Cetrite depends on the kind of crops it is. It can be a field crop or a perennial crop. Just before transplanting, we need to apply three products. These are Jai Kisan Navratna, Mangala Bhushakti and Jai Kisan Suraksha or MOP. The first one is Jai Kisan Navratna. Jai Kisan Navratna has the composition of nitrogen, phosphate and sulfur. It is in the ratio of 20% nitrogen, 20% phosphate and 13% sulfur. Nitrogen is in ammoniacal form and hence it has no leaching. Phosphate is totally water soluble which will make the nutrients readily available to plants. Sulfur helps in improving yields and protein in content of grain. It also hastens crop maturity while reducing soil alkalinity and build disease resistance. Uniform free flowing granules facilitate easy application. Navratna is available in 50 kg bags. The crop stage of Navratna is before transplanting. It is applied through broadcasting on puddled soil. The dosage requirement is 100 kgs per acre. The second one is Mangala Bhushakti. Mangala Bhushakti is a scientifically blended mixture of micronutrients 
and other essential plant proteins. It conforms to the specifications as per the notification by the government of Andhra Pradesh. It is tailor-made for soil application for all crops in Andhra Pradesh. It contains nutrient content as zinc at the rate of 6%, iron at the rate of 0.5% and manganese at also at the rate of 0.5%. The benefits of Mangala Bhushakti contains nutrients in a balanced form for higher use efficiency and it helps in improving plant growth, yield and quality of produce. The ideal time for usage of Mangala Bhushakti is during the sowing or transplanting time or within 20 days after sowing or transplanting. The ideal crop stage of Mangala Bhushakti is during transplanting. The dosage required is 10 kgs per acre. We should not mix it with phosphorus containing fertilizers and the application method is by soil application. The third product that we talk about is called Jai Kisan Suraksha or Jai Kisan Mangala MOP. This is an imported and most popular potassic fertilizer. Suraksha is totally water soluble and is readily available for crops. Helps in complete plant nutrition. It is high in potassium content and therefore it helps in building resistance to pests and diseases. It also helps in preventing lodging of the crop. Suraksha is available in 50 kg bags. The crop stage of Suraksha is before transplanting and the applied dosage is 22 kgs per acre. The next few products are applied at various stages after transplanting. At the time of transplanting, Mangala Kelpak Sanjeevani is used. Mangala Kelpak Sanjeevani is the liquid extract of fastest growing seaweed, Eclonia maxima, from the South Africa's western coast. It contains auxins, cytokinis, gibberellinus, vitamins, major and micronutrients, and antibiotics. The benefits of Mangala Kelpak Sanjeevani is that it helps in early germination of seeds and establishment of seedlings and contains very wide auxins cytokinins ratio and hence triggers new root formation and it helps tide over adverse soil moisture conditions and increases yield improves quality and shelf life of produce. Mangala Kelpak Sanjeevani is suitable for foliar sprays, fertigation, seed treatment, root tipping and instant mixing with fertilizer. Use 25 milliliter per liter for bulk seed dipping and for root dipping use 10 milliliter per liter just before transplanting. And for instant mixing, Mix 1 litre with 50 kg of fertilizer per acre and apply the fertilizer immediately after mixing. The next product that we will talk about is a biostimulant. The next product is Mangala Gold, which is used 10 days after transplanting. Mangala Gold is a granular end product having humic substances from aerobic decomposition of organic matter as basic ingredient. It contains 1.5% humic substances having humic acid, fulvic acid and human as predominant composition. The benefit of Mangala Gold is that because it is a biostimulant, therefore it accelerates root development and improves vegetative growth such as tillers, branches etc. And it helps produce thicker, greener and healthier crops. Mangala Gold is applied in paddy with a dosage of 5 to 10 kgs per acre. The crop stage of Mangala Gold is to apply 10 days after transplanting. The dosage required is 5 to 10 kgs per acre. And it is applied by the way of top 
dressing. It is available in 1 and 5 kg pouches, 10 kg buckets and 25 kg drums. Biostimulants include diverse formulation of compounds, substances and microorganisms that are applied to plants or soils to improve crop vigor, yields, quality and tolerance of abiotic stresses. The next two products are applied 20 to 25 days after transplanting and again 45 to 50 days after transplanting. The stage which is 40 to 45 days after transplanting is called panicle initiation stage as we can see right here on the screen. At the time of 20 to 25 days after transplanting, we apply Jaikisan urea to the rice crop at the rate of 25 kgs per acre. At the time of panicle initiation, which occurs 45 to 50 days after transplanting, we apply Jaikisan urea and Jaikisan suraksha. Urea is applied at the rate of 25 kgs per acre and Jekisan Suraksha is applied at the rate of 12 kgs per acre. Both are applied by the way of top dressing. Jekisan Urea is the most concentrated nitrogenous fertilizer commercially available. It is free flowing and completely soluble in water. Nitrogen is readily available to plants and hence results are quick. It can be applied at sowing time and also can be top dressed but direct contact with seed is to be avoided. Its advantages in foliar sprays are it results in an immediate recovery from nitrogen deficiency. Since it is a concentrated fertilizer, a split application is recommended. In dry conditions, its assimilation through leaves is faster and effective due to lack of soil moisture. In waterlogged conditions, it prevents leaching losses of nitrogen and in saline soils as foliar sprays, it avoids further increase in the concentration of salts. The next product to apply is a speciality plant nutrition in liquid form called Mangala Paddy Special. It is a highly concentrated emulsion containing macro and chelated micronutrients and plant hormones. It contains major nutrients which are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and chelated micronutrients, silicon and flowering hormone which help paddy crop in growth and development. Flowering hormone is the hypothesized hormone-like molecule responsible for controlling and or triggering flowering in plants. It is produced in leaves and acts in the shoot apical meristem of buds and growing tips. It is known to be graft transmissible and even functions between species. The benefits of Mangala Paddy Special is that it is suitable for application in nursery and main field and contains silicon which improves tolerance to diseases and pests and it helps in panical initiation, grain filling and improves yield and quality. It is applied for paddy and dosage is for milliliter per liter of water. At least two sprays are required for significant impact which implies there needs to be two applications. In the first application during 45 days after transplanting and the second application which is during 12 to 15 days after first application and third application is during grain filling stage. It is available in 500 milliliter and one liter. The next product is a speciality fertilizer which is called Boon 45. It's NK grade that contains 13% nitrogen and 45% potassium. It is also called potassium nitrate. It is useful for development of grains. Boon 45 increases the shelf life and quality of produce it is sprayed during the milky stage 
or dose stage to improve grain size and protein content. Its dosage is 7 to 10 gram per liter of water and two sprays at 7 days into well are ideal. Bone 45 is free of heavy metals and chlorides. It is compatible with most of the pesticides and reduces immature shedding of grains. There are some micronutrient deficiencies which rice crop can suffer from. The first of these is zinc. Its symptoms appear in the top four leaves with chlorotic midribs of young leaves. This would mean that the midribs of young leaves will be pale or yellow due to lack of chlorophyll as you can see on the image on the left. In older leaves, which is the image on the right, reddish brown necrotic spots often resembling rusted iron appear. The leaves also become small and spindle shaped. They also tend to be brittle and break with a sound when bent in the middle of the leaf. This disease is known as Chira disease. To manage the disease, which is caused by zinc deficiency, we need to apply Mangala zinc sulfate at the rate of 20 kgs per acre as basal during puddling. Or we can spray with Mangala zinc sulfate at the rate of 2 grams by mixing it with 5 grams of urea per liter. The second deficiency is iron. This deficiency symptoms are chlorosis of young leaves, which is seen by the loss of green color. Intervenial portions of these leaves become chlorotic and yellowish, while midribs remain green. Under severe condition, young leaves appear as bleached. Yellowish turned leaves become brick red, dry up and drop. As we can see on the image on the right, it shows the iron deficiency. To manage iron deficiency, we spray the crop with ferrous sulfate at the rate of 2 grams per litre. The next deficiency is called manganese deficiency. The deficiency appears during the nursery stage. Intervenial chlorosis of young leaves with dark green veins as we can see in the image here. To manage this deficiency, spray the crop two or three times with manganese sulfate at, at the rate of 2 grams per litre at 4 to 5 days interval. This finishes our nutrient management in rice module. Thank you.